Hey YouTube, this is Eric Thompson, and um, I'm going to do a little video today, and just go over some things with um, water monitor, um, socializing and taming, and like my methods I use, and um, believe it or not, Aura here is an imported animal. Don't know if he was a wild caught or captive hatch, but he's imported. I do know that. He's one of the two. And um, his mate, I got him. She is captive bred, but she's not really that handleable. She'll eat out of my hand all day long, but she's not she's not really social. It's going to take time with her. And um, as I say a lot, you know, the first few months of their life, from what I find, is pretty critical. But um, I've only been keeping these guys for a couple of years. I've been studying them my whole life, trying to learn everything I could about them, because I always planned on keeping them whenever I grew up, ever since I was a kid, and first seeing them on TV and learning what they was and all that, and uh, anyway, and now I finally got them, and I haven't been keeping them long, but um, I'm a fast learner, and uh, I'm just going to go over some of my experiences and things that's worked for me, but um, I do things quite a bit different than a lot of people do. And um, my previous water monitor, she was a female that, and I, um, I had her, and she was an import. I actually got her from underground reptiles, and she was an import, and uh, I believe she was straight up wild caught. And I could do the same thing with her that I'm doing with him. I'd let her explore outside all the time and take her to the pond for enrichment and all that. And anyways, but like my methods. And stuff that I have learned what's been worked for me with water monitors is I learned a lot after keeping spirit I actually thought when I got him and I, I learned from things I wish I did different when I had spirit and I did with him and one thing I found with an older juvenile or something that's not used to being handled don't ever force yourself on them because that'll blow it like the female one I got she's a beautiful animal and she's captive bred, and she'll eat out of my hand all day long, but she does not like to be handled. You can't handle her. And if I do force myself on her and try pressing her into it, it's going to ruin her. So I'm having to use patience with her. But I prefer getting them whenever they're hatchlings, when they're within their first few months of life. Because it seems, it seems like that's a critical time, because... It seems like after them first few months, them first few months, they're learn in the wild. They'll be learning what they are, and and uh, at, during that time, they're learning what's a threat, and what ain't a threat, and this, that, and the other. And anyways, and I mean it's the same in captivity. These animals have only been being kept in captivity for maybe 30 years, if that. And um, it's always going to be a wild animal. It's another thing I always stress. It's not a cat or a dog. And you're not going to turn it into a cat or a dog. It's its own unique thing, and it's a wild animal. But as far as my techniques go, when you get a baby, is um, I'll expose them to a lot of different sights and sounds. And with a baby, I'll give about a week to acclimate, you know, before I really handle it. But after that week, I handle them and handle them a lot. I handle them as much as possible. And... Um, like him when he was a baby I would put him up under my shirt and take him out in public and everything you know and um, the thing is when I mean, you've got a little baby water monitor that's still getting used to you and it's still developing on what to fear what not to fear it's nervous and if you walk around you're in a store with a hundred people in it and it's up underneath your shirt it's not gonna leave that shirt because a lot of people be like, you're crazy, it'll run out and get loose, and it'll, no it won't either, it's common sense when you think about it, because inside your shirt it feels secure, and it's scared of people, and it's damn sure not going to walk out in the open or want to get out on the ground inside of a store with all kinds of noise and people, so what it's going to do, it's going to be nervous, but it's not going to leave your shirt, and then a few times doing that, it'll start seeing that nothing's going to happen to it. And so it gets comfortable, it feels security from it. It's all about, about uh, building positive experiences. And um, 
And look at this, he even follows me around. And it's pretty crude following, but it still counts as following. But that's because I've worked with him a lot. And I got my own methods I use like that. And it's all about getting them to associate you with positive things. That's what it's all about. And if you ain't getting them to associate you with positive things, it's not going to work out. And um, another thing I, I tell people, when you're handling one, when you're working with it, and it's a baby, and if it bolts on you, you have to run it down and grab it. When you first grab it, it's going to be really scared and really tore up. And a lot of people are going to freak out and be like, all right, I'm putting you up and put it up. But don't ever do that. Don't ever put them up when they're scared or nervous. Because you don't want their last memory of being out to be a one that they was scared a bad experience. So I always hold them until they do calm back down. And I never really restrain them. Always handle them underhanded and um, never like fully restrain them, you know. If they're a little bit unsure, you just hold them underhanded like this, you know, and just keep a little bit of a grip on them just to uh, slow them down, you know, and that way they recess the situation. And um, another thing, I have people ask me and stuff and be like, well, my animal's tame, but I'm scared to take it outside. Well, I was, I was taking him outside as a baby before he ever even really bonded with me. You know, I'd take him outside and put him that way. He was used to seeing um, pure, natural, unfiltered sunlight. Because a lot of times, their first time going outside, they will freak out. Because out in, in direct sunlight, they're seeing unfiltered UV light, something that we can't see. And we look totally different. The world looks totally different to them. And it triggers a lot of their natural instincts. But I've, I worked with him outside at an early age. And like I said, I exposed him to a bunch of new things, take him a lot of places, still do to this day. And, um, and from what I can see, which I mean, then again, I'm not an expert. I'll, I will admit, I'm not an expert, and I ain't got a whole lot of experience. But from what's worked for me is I handle them as much as possible. I get them as early as possible. And I expose them to as many different sights and sounds as I possibly can, as soon as I can. Because if you take them out in a public situation, and even if that animal's a little bit flighty of you, if you got it up underneath your shirt or your jacket, and it's out in a public place, it's not going to leave the security of that shirt or jacket. And then it'll start sensing security from you. And then you'll have what I got here, where they'll, where they'll pretty much gradually follow you around as you're walking around the yard with them. And they're very intelligent animals. They're fast learners. They can be trained to do a lot of things. I've had all of my monitors why I had them in a routine of taking them outside at a certain time first thing in the morning, a certain time of the evening. And they would always do their business outside, which was awesome because they didn't have to do nearly as many water changes. And I got him in that habit. He very rarely ever goes in his cage. But the thing is with this guy, he's the worst one about potty training because it seems like he prefers to poop on me than he does outside in the yard. I've never been pooped on by animals so much in my life as I have been this guy. I've literally taken him outside and walk, around, walk him around for like two hours and he got to do, no, do his business till I walk through the door and all down my damn, all down my shoulder and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's one thing that, one of Aura's flaws, that's about his only flaw. Other than that, he's a great animal and I did a great job socializing spirit and I, I refined my techniques, and after keeping her, I learned things I wish I would have did different with her, and thought a lot on it, and I did them things with him. It's turned out really good. Hopefully, by this time next year, I'll be able to have my female out walking her around too. I don't know, that's a long shot, 
that's a long shot if I'll ever be able to take her outside and let her walk around because she's never really seen a whole lot of sunlight, you know. And uh, right now I'm just having to let her warm up to me, and that's what I'm going to have to do with her. I hope it don't take a year, but it probably will. might even take more. I hope not, but it might. But I'm just trying to tell people what's worked for me and what I've did and what I've learned because my methods, even though I've not got much experience doing this, my methods have proved to work and they've worked out well for me. I had a savanna monitor and I didn't know, didn't know nothing about um, socializing them or nothing and I worked with him as a baby and he was, he was just as calm. He was a big baby. And I, of course, I sold him to make room for my first water monitor. And um, I wish I wouldn't have sold him because I feel kind of bad about selling him now. But I always wanted a water monitor more than anything. And I just don't have the space to keep a savanna and a water. But uh, that's one thing about these guys. They require a lot of space. They need a room size enclosure as adults. And, um, yeah, but from what I can tell people, if you want to get your animal tame and social, get them as young as possible, expose them to as much stuff as you possibly can. Don't restrain them. Don't, you don't want to force yourself on them. It, it, it's, it's a fine line. you got to learn to read the animal. Oh, that's something I should have got at it first. Before you ever attempt any of it, it's a fine line, and you need to learn to speak these guys' language before. you got to learn their body language. you gotta, you got to watch them and um, observe everything and um, learn their language. And um, then, that way you know, because... Even though what I'm saying, I handle them as much as possible and stuff, you still can't force yourself. You don't ever want to restrain them. You got to learn to read that animal's body language because it's a fine line and you got to balance it. Like when you're handling and working with them babies, you don't want to handle them too much. But from what I learned, you want to handle them as much as you can. And, uh, you, and you dang sure don't want to take a baby and beat around the bush with it because after that first few months they sort of set in their ways and um, then it's harder to convince them of what is a threat and what ain't a threat but yeah and from what I've gathered that's the most successful thing I've had luck with but this video is getting ready to getting ready to be ended because I'm, I'm about out of things to say, which I could actually go on all day about these guys, but I think that's about enough for this video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Um, it'd really be appreciated. I hope um, that I can help other people to get their animals to the level I get mine at, and I hope I can be of some help to some people.